Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about the fragrance wheel. If you've never heard of the fragrance wheel, then think of it a little bit like the colour wheel in art. It's just a way of taking the continuum that is fragrance and trying to categorise fragrances into particular boxes. Why would you want to do this? Well, it can help you with layering because actually layering fragrances that are adjacent to each other or opposite each other can have really interesting effects. It can also help you with choosing fragrances for your collection because you can understand your own taste in fragrance a lot better if you understand the fragrance wheel. And it can also help you to challenge your taste in fragrance because you can choose fragrances that are opposite categories that you would normally choose. So fragrances that are extremely different from the fragrances that you would normally go for to try to expand your taste. So if this kind of content interests you, then please do consider subscribing if you haven't done already. I'm Claire Smith. I make videos all about perfume, perfume science, perfume history, and I also do some straight perfume reviews. So if that kind of content interests you, as I've said, please consider subscribing. And also please like this video if this kind of thing does interest you. So I'm just going to take you through a very brief history of the fragrance wheel. And then I'm going to tell you about each of the categories within the fragrance wheel and also give you some examples of some perfumes that fit into each of those categories so you can try and categorise your own collection and understand your own perfume tastes. So the fragrance wheel has existed in some form or another since 1949 and really the modern version of the fragrance wheel was developed by a perfumer called Michael Edwards in 1992. So his idea was to categorise fragrance into four main families which are floral, ambers, woody and fresh fragrances but actually he's also subdivided those categories into, into further categories. So in actual fact, there are 14 different subcategories as part of the fragrance wheel. And I would say they, these cover the majority of fragrances in existence today, but I do think there's one glaring omission with this fragrance wheel, which I will talk about at the end of the video. So the idea of the fragrance wheel really is that most people will tend to gravitate towards one particular quadrant of the fragrance wheel or perhaps even only particular subcategories of one quadrant. So I'd really be interested to know as I'm going through the categories, which is your favourite or which couple are your favourite? And is that your experience? Do you tend to like only florals? Do you tend to like only ambers? Because I feel like I like a lot of different categories within the fragrance wheel. And OK, I do have some particular favourites, but I wouldn't say that I'm, I've got quite a narrow choice within this fragrance wheel. So I'm just going to go through each of the categories in turn now and tell you about each one and give you an example. So let's start off with perhaps the biggest and oldest category of fragrances, which is the florals. So florals are really probably what most people would think of when they think of perfume, probably first off. And really florals consist of three subcategories. So the subcategories are inventively named florals and also soft florals and ambery florals. So first off, florals, what would you think of with those? Well, they're going to be things that are very photorealistic, things that smell like fresh cut flowers, like you're in a florist shop. They're a little bit stemmy and green as well as floral. And notes that really make you think of straight up florals are notes like peonies, fresh cut roses, lilacs, lily of the valley, lilies, perhaps even jasmine, tuberose, that kind of thing. So which fragrances in my own collection would I would I classify as something that's just a straight up floral? Well, I think really the straight up floral in my collection is probably Gucci Bloom Natari de Fiore. I can also think of, of fragrances like, like Flower Market by Replica. That one to me is very much like you were just in a florist shop. So I think that's a really good example of something that's just a straight up floral fragrance. So the next category within florals are the soft florals. So what do I mean by that? I mean something that's maybe a little bit powdery feeling. So um, actually powdery florals can be things that are associated with powdery musks or they can be things that are associated with powdery aldehydes. Aldehydes can tend to make things smell a little bit metallic or even a little bit bubbly or they can make fragrances a little bit powdery. And I think really it's the powdery kind of aldehydes that are really the things that really make this category. So which kinds of floral notes would I associate with this category? Well, I would really choose things like iris, violet, heliotrope and mimosa, really, really powdery, soft florals. And this is a category that I really like. 
So for my own collection, I'd choose fragrances such as Saruti 1881. I would also choose fragrances like Narciso Poudre and also things like Infusion de Iris by Prada. So the final category within florals is really the floral ambers. So floral ambers are kind of warmer fragrances, warmer floral notes such as orange blossom, things that sort of feel a little bit more sort of sunny almost. These, this category was also associated with sweet warm spices and can also be associated with powdery vanillas as well. So the fragrances in my own collection that I would say sort of fit it roughly into this category, I don't really feel like I have a, any kind of fantastic example, would really be something like Elie Sable Parfum because to me that has a warmth to it. Another fragrance that I think really fits in this category well would be something like Prada Paradox because it really has that very strong orange blossom note as well in that fragrance and it just has kind of a sunny feel to it. So the next big family of fragrances is really the ambers. So you may have heard this, this family of, of fragrances previously termed oriental. I don't tend to use the term oriental but if you see that term that is really what they mean by, by that. They mean amber. So oriental is a term that is sort of, you know, now not really looked upon in a friendly manner because it kind of harks back to our uh, colonial past, which is something that I think a lot of people are really not proud of. And so they don't really want to be reminded of it by, by calling fragrances oriental. Also, oriental really means of the East. So really choosing to use that word to describe an entire category of fragrances is really quite meaningless. So that's really why that, that terminology has shifted from oriental to amber. So amber is a family that's really built around spices, around resins and around vanilla. Those are really the three things that really make up the amber category. And actually, as part of the amber category, there are probably about three subcategories. You could probably also lump in floral ambers as part of the amber family if you wanted to, but I've put it with, with florals because I think it's a little bit more floral than amber. So the first subcategory of ambers are really the soft ambers. So the soft ambers are things that have a little bit of a sensual feel to them. So they're things that are sort of hinging around floral still, but they have a little bit more of a spiciness to them. They have a little bit more of a depth to them. So things that have incense in them and also perhaps some kind of soft vanilla-y, ambery kind of tones. So a fragrance from my own collection that would spring to mind would be something like uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier's Classique EDT. Something that really makes me think of incense sticks. It makes me think of Bag Champa, that fragrance. So the next category as part of the ambers is really just the straight up amber fragrances. And actually these are leading on from soft ambers, but they're just a little bit deeper. They're a little bit spicier. They're more resinous. They're less floral. And they just have this kind of more exotic feel to them. So I think this fragrance category would, would hinge really around things like cumin, coriander, cinnamon, also florals, but deeper florals. So things like orchid, maybe even a lang ylang, that kind of thing, sort of a deeper, richer floral, perhaps jasmine, perhaps even some musks as well. The more sensual musks would be in this category, I think. So I think for this one, I would probably choose something like Chanel Coco Eau de Parfum. I could also choose a fragrance such as um, Kenzo Jungle L'Elephant. I think that fragrance really fits very nicely in this category. I think also this category also makes me think of sort of more old school perfumery. This category was really something that was very, very popular in women's perfumery in the 1970s and the 1980s. So you would think things like opium and things like that. So the final part of the amber category would be things like the woody ambers. So woody ambers are going to be hinging around fragrance notes such as sandalwood and patchouli, the lighter end of the woody scale. They are also going to have the amber accord in them usually and they are also perhaps going to have things like myrrh in them. So a little bit of a rich kind of resinous feel to them. So I don't think I really have any fragrances that really fit in this category really really well but one that I think kind of fits peripherally is something like uh, Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel and another one I think that sort of fits a little bit would be something like L'Ombre de Merveille by um, Hermes. So the next fragrance family is the Woody family and 
woody fragrances are really associated with citrus top notes quite often but also woody fragrances themselves can really exhibit quite a wide range of, of styles so you can have things that are very light like sandalwoods very milky kind of style woods blonde woods or you can have something a lot deeper so you can have something like a pine or a cedar wood something that really does very smell very very woody so actually within the woody category there are again three different sections um so i'm going to start off with the lightest again you could also include the woody ambers in the woody category but i've put it in the amber category so for the start of the woody category i'm going to start off with the very originally named subcategory of woody fragrances so the woody subcategory is really hinged around the more aromatic kind of smelling woods so these are fragrances that are going to be based around sandalwood, even vetiver, which is actually technically a grass, but it has a definite woodiness about it. Or something like cedarwood, something really kind of quite aromatic as well as woody. So the fragrances in my own collection that I would put in the woody category would be something like Stash by SJP. Also Halfetti by Penhaligans would probably go in this category just about. So that's woody. So the next category would be the mossy woods and mossy woods are really the smoothest woods and they are things that really make me think of sort of basically grey green. If I was going to imagine a fragrance in colour then a mossy wood would be a grey green colour to me. I think this, this fragrance category is well going to actually include the sheepers so it's going to include fragrances with, with oak moss, with patchouli and also with more citrusy top notes. Mossy Woods fragrances can also have very sweet and ambery nuances to them as well. So the fragrance from my own collection that I would put in the Mossy Woods category was something like Chloe Nomad, but really any kind of cheaper fragrance is probably going to overlap in the Mossy Woods category. So the final subcategory in the Woody family would be the Dry Woods. So the drier woods are going to be hinging around things that are warmer. So things like Paolo Santo, for example, would be a drier wood. Also things that have a bit of a leathery feel, so things that have labdanum in them perhaps would also fit under the dry woods category. I don't think I really have any kind of dry wood fragrance in my collection really. I think really the one that is really the archetypal example of this category is going to be something like Gucci Guilty Absolute, which is actually a fragrance that is marketed towards men and I think is now discontinued, but that one really does have a very dry, woody, leathery feel about it that would really fit perfectly as part of this category. The next category that we're on to is really the freshies, so the fresh fragrances, and that has a lot of different types within it. So it actually has five different subcategories. It, it's really the most diverse of all of the sections within this fragrance wheel. And actually, I think really the first one could really overlap with the woody fragrances quite a bit. So the first category is really the aromatics. So the aromatic woody fragrances, which is why I said it could really over overlap and be a woody kind of category as well. So this fragrance subcategory really hinges around notes such as lavender, also more aromatic kind of herbal notes. So things like sage, rosemary, also more spicy, earthy kind of florals such as geranium they would also be associated with this category i think this category is sometimes also called fougeres and fougere means fern but it's really that kind of barbershop kind of smell that almost sort of soapy very sort of herbal smell so i think for my own collection i don't really have many fragrances that would fit in this category but the one that really springs to mind is really Colonia by Aqua de Palma. That fragrance really does have quite a barbershop feel to it. Another one that I've tried recently that has a sort of slight feel because it has lavender would be Diesel D. This fragrance really does make me think of this kind of category. It's very aromatic, that fragrance. So now we're going to get into the fresh fragrances properly and really fresh fragrances have a very clean, invigorating feel. And I think that's what people really like about them. They're also fragrances for people who don't really like to wear fragrance because they are things that smell really quite natural, things that you could just smell out and about really. These are things that just smell very fresh, very bright and very invigorating. So the first proper group within the fresh category are really the citrus fragrances. So citrus fragrances have been around an awful long time 
because actually the first eau de cologne kind of fragrances that came out in the 16th century were really based around citrus. So citrus fragrances obviously have citrus in them. So things like bergamot, lemon, lime, also grapefruit, also things that aren't citrus but could be considered to be in the category of citrus. So things like pineapple can smell a little bit like citrus to me. Also florals such as neroli and pettigrain can smell more citrus than floral to me. So it doesn't have to be just citrus but I think those kinds of things have a very citrusy feel to them. So I think really the fragrances from my own collection that I would put in this category would be things like um, Eau de Cologne 4711 would be an, a good example of this, of this category. Also things like um, Funny by Moschino would, would fit in this category very well. I think this category is something that tends not to stick around very long. Citrus fragrances are, are generally things that are built around top notes. So they're things that don't stick around on skin for very long. If you find a long lasting citrus fragrance, then you're doing very, very well. So the next category of fresh fragrance is really the watery fragrances. These are the oceanic ones, the aquatic ones, but also the azonic fragrances. And I've done a couple of videos on what makes a fragrance smell watery. I've done a video on what a petrichor kind of smell is made up of. So things that smell like after the rain i've done a video on that so you can check those out if you're interested in those kinds of fragrances so for me this category always has a bit of a 90s feel about it because those kinds of notes of cologne and those kinds of watery florals and very kind of salty fragrances and oceanic fragrances fresh fragrances were really popular in the 90s and i think that's why i don't really have that many kinds of those kinds of fragrances in my collection because they're just a bit out of fashion but the one that I think really makes me think of ozonic and very kind of after the rain kind of smells, almost like a thunderstorm kind of smell, would be Oh So Decadent by Marc Jacobs. I think also I could choose something from the Hermes Un Jardin line here, or I could choose something like Max Turquatic. So the next subcategory of fragrances as part of the fresh family are the green fragrances. And these are the fragrances that smell like freshly mown grass, that smell like you're in a meadow or smell like just crushed leaves. So these kinds of fragrances are going to be hinged around fragrance notes such as galbanum, which is a very kind of green, dry kind of smell, um, almost like a pondweed kind of smell. I think even things like chamomile could go in this category. And for me, I think my greenest fragrance is probably Alluring Fig by Theodorus Calatinus. So this one has a very green kind of fig leaf kind of smell about it, which is why I'm putting it in this category. But it is still also a vanilla fragrance as well. So I think I don't really have an exactly green fragrance. I think you could also put smells like cucumber, violet leaf in this category as well. So yeah, green fragrances are something that are becoming more popular, but I think in previous designer fragrance terms, green fragrances were really not, not something that you saw a lot in women's designer fragrances. So the final official category that I'm going to talk about today, I am going to talk about one more, but the final official category are the fruity fragrances. And this is part of the fresh family again. So the fruity fragrances are everything apart from the citrus fragrances. And they are the fragrances that have notes such as apple, pear, blackberries, blackcurrants, strawberries, raspberries, peach, apricot. All of those kinds of fruits are in this category. And really, I think this category is looked upon as quite juvenile in a way. It's something that I think is associated with younger people, fruity fragrances or straight up fruity fragrances anyway. But I really like a fruity fragrance and I think fruity fragrances can have a massive impact because they can be just so realistic and they can smell so, so delicious in a way. So I think the ones from my collection that really make me think immediately fruity more than anything else are things like Eden Juicy Apple by Kayali. That's a very, very fruity apple kind of fragrance with perhaps some raspberry as well. And actually the other fragrance in my collection that really makes me think just pure fruity with only a little bit of a background floral of rose is Angel Nova. Angel Nova is so, so fruity. It has that raspberry, it has that lychee and it's just a big fruity hit. So I think having studied the fragrance wheel and, and really thought about my collection, I've realised that the fragrance wheel doesn't include a huge section of fragrances 
And I don't know whether you've noticed, but it's the gourmand fragrances. So gourmand fragrances literally mean the ones that smell of food. So actually fruity is covered, but what about all those kind of chocolatey, caramel based, toffee based, also nutty fragrances, and even the savory fragrances that are based around rice or milk, and maybe even the coconut fragrances. They're just not covered as part of the fragrance wheel. And I think that's really because the fragrance wheel in its modern form was developed in the 1990s. And perhaps at that point, gourmand fragrances weren't a big category of perfumery and so weren't included. I'm not really sure, really. Maybe they're also looked down upon by sort of old school perfumers as well, because gourmand fragrances are something that that really is isn't part of traditional perfumery, is it? It's just a, a very different category and it's a very commercial category of fragrance as well. It's a very popular fragrance kind of category. So I think the one for my own collection that I would use to represent the gourmand fragrance category that's been completely missed off that wheel would be something like Angel by Thierry Mugler, the archetypal gourmand fragrance. So I don't know what you think about the fragrance wheel. Do you think the fragrance wheel really covers the breadth of, of the fragrance world and how useful do you find the fragrance wheel? Do you think that the fragrance wheel will help you to, to layer fragrances more effectively or do you think it will help you to explore different areas and different categories of fragrance? Do you find yourself gravitating towards one particular quadrant of the fragrance wheel? I'd be really interested to know, so please let me know down below. And also, please, if you have liked this video, like the video. And also, please, if you want to subscribe, then please do consider subscribing. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.